Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and Apple released iOS 9.3 Beta 1 today, and this was much of a surprise. They had previously released 9.2.1 Beta 2, and we still haven't seen that released. 9.3 actually adds a few significant changes. So let's take a look at the build number. You can see here it's 13E5181D. So this particular uh, build is a little bit longer, came in at about a one point eight gigabytes, something around there, pretty large, but not un not unreasonable install, and it adds some really nice updates. So one of the updates it adds is something called Night Shift. If we go into Settings, and then we find Display here, what we'll get is a new option for blue light, blue light reduction, and blue light actually can help you stay awake. So you want to reduce that if you're using it at night on an iPad or something like that. And let me show you how that works. So if we turn it on, the actual screen changes, and we can make it warmer or cooler, depending on what we prefer. Just leave it in the middle, or we can set a schedule for it. So if we want to schedule from sunset to sunrise, it'll change on its own, and you can leave it off by default is how it's set, at least on this beta. So that's a nice addition. I actually played around with it a little bit on here, and it reduces a little bit of eye strain too if it's a little bit darker. One of the other things they changed was Touch ID for Notes. So if you go down to your Notes app, find that here we'll go to notes and under notes you now have password protection so if you go into password protection you can turn on touch id so you can lock your notes so someone can't get into your notes so maybe you want to hand your phone to someone but you don't want them opening this you can do that and just enable touch id you just first have to create a password or a passcode and that will allow you to use notes with with touch id and a password News has actually changed as well. They've actually added more top stories. They've made it load. It seems a little bit faster. And it doesn't really look too much different here, but it seems like it's a little bit quicker all over the place. So that's a nice little addition as well. One of the other changes they've made is to health. The health app now suggests apps, although mine isn't suggesting any apps. It suggests apps based on where you're walking or running or whatever you're doing, it will suggest them down here if it has anything that it thinks would benefit you from using. So that's a nice little addition as well. One of the things we can't show right now is CarPlay, and CarPlay has some several updates to bring them a little bit more in line with how iOS works, and that should be a nice little update. One of the other things we can't show either is education. Apple made a huge education change in this, meaning it includes multiple education features such as shared iPads for students, new classroom apps, and apps, Apple School Manager, and Apple ID management features that have been much improved. So that's a really big push in the education direction that they used to be really big in. So it's good to see them coming back to that, and that should help a lot of you that actually administer a lot of different iPads. One of the other things we can't see actually has to do with Apple Watch. And Apple Watch has been updated as well with a little beta, but basically it allows you to add more than one watch to your iPhone. You can pair more than one. So that's a nice little addition if you wanted to do that. You also have a couple little fast shortcut shortcuts that they've added using Force Touch on the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. So for an example, if we go to settings, if we just force press or 3D touch rather, we've got quick options. We can do the same under weather. We've got a few different things, maybe under apps, redeem, update all. So the native Apple apps have a few more things inside of them. So that's nice. You have that as well. Apple Wallet has also been updated. So if we go here and I'll go to Wallet. Under Wallet, you can see this is an old expired Starbucks card. It has the little app down in the bottom. So we can switch right to the app and open that up if we want to do that as well. So we just tap on it and it opens that up. So that's really nice as well. There's only a couple little other changes that they've made. One is to Siri. They've added a couple languages for Malaysia, Finland, and Hebrew for Israel. So those are really nice as well. And then the app switcher on the 6S and 6S Plus has been updated slightly to give a little bit of haptic feedback when you use the force touch, you, you 3D touch here. So you can actually feel a little force touch feedback when you're pushing on that. Other than that, there's not any other updates, but I think that's pretty significant for a 0.1 or a 0.3 update rather until we see a next OS revision with iOS 10. I think that's pretty significant with all of those little changes. I did check under wallpapers. I haven't seen anything there. And also for those of you that always wonder, is there lag when you turn to landscape and 3D touch on something? It seems to be fixed. Let me do it here and see if we get the same response here. But let's do 3D touch on, oh, it, it was some display or frame rate lag there. I checked it earlier and I didn't have that lag, but it looks like it's back. So uh, 
it might be temperamental at this point, but before I actually didn't have that issue. So I'm not sure if it's fixed or not. Maybe they'll fix it in, a, in the final update. But at first, when I first tested it, it was really fast. So no issues originally anyway. So that's pretty much it for iOS 9.3 beta one. If you found anything, let us know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.